Hey, what's up, YouTube? I'm back again with another review. Today marks three years of me being on YouTube. So, well, as I'm filming this, it's February 28th, but uh, for you guys watching, it'll be March 7th. Now, I actually joined YouTube on March 6th, and I posted my first video on March 6th of 2016, so I noticed my last two years, I just been making them on March 7th. I don't know why. Uh, I guess I just mixed up the date, so I guess we'll just keep it with March 7th. Um, but to commemorate this, I decided to crack open one of these Ghostbusters high C drinks, um, the Ecto Cooler. So for none of you or for any of you who aren't Ghostbusters fans, these uh, still taste great. These high C drinks were made back in the '90s, and then for the 2016 Ghostbusters movie, they re-released them. So managed to get two cases. And uh, one case I only have drank a few out of. Um, so what makes Ghostbusters significant for my YouTube channel is basically, it was my first viral video was Ghostbusters related. I'm still a very big Ghostbusters fan even though I haven't made too many videos regarding Ghostbusters. And um, I did a review for the Ghostbusters Ecto Minis which was their toy line for the 2016 Ghostbusters and um, <clears throat> pretty much with my review of that of all their all the I bought on the day that it released I bought all the stuff from my local Toys R Us that they had uh, one of each of anything Ghostbusters related and I reviewed it in one of my earlier videos what makes that significant is that when I uploaded that if you searched or wanted to find a review of the Ghostbusters Ecto Minis, out of the entire internet, mine was the only review. Um, yeah, so, and it, it, the views shows it. Um, I don't know how many views it's up to now. I don't really look too much back on my older videos, but that one is very significant to this YouTube channel. Um, and I think it's really cool. Uh, I think it got like a quarter of a million views. Um, and... There were some other ones uh, later on, some other reviews of other people's, but most of those were channels that were sponsored by Mattel. So of course they would only say biased things about it anyways. But, so that's a little bit of history about my YouTube channel and why Ghostbusters is significant, even though uh, it doesn't play much of a role in my channel anymore. So, cheers. <laughs> so, to get on with the review for my military side of what makes I guess my collection significant not really the YouTube channel but I suppose it applies in a way is today we're gonna to be taking a look at oh well let me open this bag first oh you know what this goodie bag deserves its own review and that's what's gonna happen so Today we're going to be taking a look at the MSA Millennium gas mask. Um, this is the law enforcement or civilian version of the U.S. military's MCU-2P uh, gas mask. Um, the Millennium only came with the flat voice diaphragm. They did not have the microphone jack like you'll see on the Air Force's MCU-2 slash AP. This one also uses a rubber face piece so it will protect you against blister agents with the Air Force One blister agents will eat through it um, so later on they designed it with black rubber like this this one just came or has a uh, tear gas CS gas CN gas whatever the hell you want to call it filter bottom line it's only riot control agents don't use this in an NBC environment it's not rated for it um, and of course it'll say that on there too but typically your smaller ones are like that are not NBC uh, rated. It does have the protective lens, XL valve cover, XL valve, drinking tube, drinking tube housing, extra voice diaphragm so if you're a left or right handed shooter you can uh, put the filter on either side. This, excuse me, this one came with it on the left side so it's a right handed shooter. It does come with the standard head harness, uh, the six point head harness. I'm going to replace it with a uh, uh, I'm going to replace it with a skull cap. I find those a little bit more comfortable. I have an unissued one back in my room. 
but just for the video I want to show you guys what they originally came with it was like that and same for the uh, MCU 2 P's came with that too so on the inside it's pretty much just like an MCU 2 P you got your air deflectors on the oral nasal cup and then of course you got the oral nasal cup itself you got your sweat drain at the bottom of the chin cup and then on the inside here I'm trying to get you guys a good view of this that clear plastic piece is another air deflector and uh, of course you got your voice diaphragm in the back so anyways guys I'm really lucky to have this thing for my collection um, probably not so much for my collection as um, I'll probably throw it keep it in this NBC bag um, in case of for whatever reason if I ever needed it so anyways guys there is the MSA Millennium uh, the difference between the MSA Millennium and the MSA Advantage 1000 is that the MSA Advantage 1000 was pretty much just for riot control agents and not really rated for NBC. Um, I think you could get, or no, you could use it for NBC, but um, it would depend on the filter. And the MSA Advantage 1000 did not have the drinking tube. Their whole XL valve was actually completely different from this. A lot more simpler, but no drinking tube. So. If you're going to be in a NBC environment and you obviously need water to survive and you're wearing the MSA Advantage 1000 then of course you can't drink water so but I'll show you guys the um, gas mask that got me into collecting gas masks and it's this one here here's what these carriers look like this is the US Air Force and the US Navy's MCU 2P series uh, bag you got your pocket down here for your decon kit. I just have the leg strap um, Held up in there. You got the ID window. You got the other strap that rolls up into this pocket You got these two other clips here. One is adjustable as you guys can see And what that is for is all clip to your pistol belt so you could just wear it on your field gear on your hip um, I saw an old training video, or not really a training video, but an old personal video of an airman with this gas mask in the 80s, and he said that they referred to it as the John Wayne style, so I guess that's just what we can call it, that's pretty cool. And then, of course, you got your leg strap, you just go around your leg, open it up, you got your uh, Velcro closures, and you got one pouch, or one pocket on the inside here, I believe that was for your atropine kit. That's your uh, auto injector. You'd throw it into your knee if you got uh, infect or hit with chemical agents or nerve agents. And then another pocket down here. That's just for uh, extra accessories, waterproofing bag, instruction manual, hood. I guess even though the hood should be installed on your gas mask. And that's pretty much it for the inside. Of course, you got two drain holes in the bottom for water. When these were made, unissued, they were uh, coated with. Um, water resistant spraying so if you get an unissued one uh, and you're trying to wash it then it'll be a little bit difficult to wash and uh, oh also these things never had markings on them the very early ones did they said something along the lines of MCU chemical biological mask but um, later on they just took that off so it's just a blank carrier similar to the U.S. Army's and U.S. Marine's M40's gas mask bag. Um, so that's pretty much it for the carrier. They came in uh, two styles. Uh, there was this style with the cotton um, straps and then later on they upgraded this strap, all these straps to nylon. And then they also had a desert tan one. Um, I've only seen Air Force, specifically Air Force Security Forces with those. I don't know why. Maybe it was a personal contract or something. I don't know why. But anyway, so they did come in green and desert tan. I'd like to get my hands on a desert tan one, but I have yet to find one. There's one uh, close to us at an Air Force uh, museum, but I don't think they'd get rid of that one. <laughs> so that's it for the carrier. Now onto the mask. See, so you got your skull cap. This is one that I've upgraded to the skull cap versus the older style. And then you got your chemical hood. Obviously, you want to store it like that if you plan on throwing it on in a jiffy. 
And then I'll just take the chemical hood off. I don't have it on properly anyways, so. It's got the second skin. Um, on the inside you can see the face piece is this grayish blue, light blue uh, material that is not rubber, that is silicone. Like I said earlier, um, blister agents will eat through the silicone. Rubber, uh, it will protect you against that. So that's why they upgraded to the second skin, which for the longest time these things used to be really hard to find, the second skin specifically. Um, but I, lately they've been popping up on the surplus market, so I'd hope maybe we get to see more of them in the future. Now this is the MCU2 AP. You got your uh, smaller voice diaphragm and your microphone jack. As you guys can see on the MSA Millennium, there is no microphone jack on the front. Uh, that is designed so that you can connect a voice amplifier uh, to it without having to have that jack in the way. Now of course they later on designed a voice amplifier that would um, fit over the jack so you could use that instead but the jack the MCU-2 APs were mostly for uh, armored vehicle and air crew so other than that it is exactly the same as the uh, MSA Millennium and uh, as you guys can see the inside is just like the Millenniums except this one, both of them are size medium. I thought I'd have to get a large Millennium, um, but that one fits better. So I think this uh, nose cup or oral nasal cup is just awkwardly small. From what I understand, that's just how all these size medium MCU masks were. And this particular one is from 1989. So uh, you it would have seen service in the Gulf War. Um, and uh, very light, of course, because they were still using the M17 at that time. But um, this one has yellowed very, very badly. I'm not sure how well the camera's picking that up at all. Uh, I think the last time I filmed with this gas mask, it didn't really look like it. But compared to this one, uh, it is a huge difference. Or at least I can tell a difference. Um, this one is completely clear. Um, I, I suppose it did yell a little bit there in the corner, but not really bad at all. Um, I don't even know if the camera can pick up the small yelling there. It's very light. Um, but typically these things yellow very, very badly, and that's why a lot of people don't like them. Um, if you were going to use one of these masks for prepping, I would highly recommend the MSA Millennium because the parts, well, parts for both of these are still very easy to get um, because they're still being made, but... It has that uh, rubber face piece, so you don't have to worry about blister agents eating this mask, unlike with this one, the military one. And of course, all the parts on it are a lot newer. Um, this one uh, is, in my opinion, such a cool design of a gas mask. Um, MSA wasn't the first creator of these things. Emma, or Scott was, and I actually have a Scott gas mask. This is the Scott MCU-2P gas mask. So it's the MCU-2P, so you notice that there's no microphone jack. Um, so it's just flat. And this one was made in 1985. So basically in the early 70s, the US military wanted to replace the M17. Ironic because that was back in the early 70s and the MC or as you guys know the M17 stayed in the service up until the mid 90s, so um, Anyways, there was a couple debates around who would get the contract essentially Scott got it and They butchered these things really badly um, Airmen would complain about the the parts on these things failing and um, I'm not sure if you guys can see it on the camera, but if you could run your finger across this brim, it is very rigid. It is not smooth at all. And comparing it to my MSA, the the lines are just fine with this one. It's all jagged, so it's like they it's like they just cut it out with a pair of scissors or something. Um, and the the glue on these things was bad. Uh, there's a video of an airman in 1988. Um, the same airman that had that, they refer to it as the John Wayne style, he complains about his mask because one of these pull tabs ripped out. Um, and that's just how they were. So they just rushed them and 
Um, they didn't make these for very long, of course. I'm very lucky to have this one. These things are pretty rare. Uh, I don't think I paid any more than 50-ish dollars. Um, won one of my collection for a long time, and it is, of course, very yellowed. It used clear silicone instead of the gray, and not really too much to say about it. I mean, other than this is where it started, you know. Unfortunately, I didn't get any accessories with this gas mask. Obviously, you can see the oral nasal cup, the drinking tube, um, the air deflector, air intake. So I have left it with its original head harness. Um, it didn't even come with a filter. This one is a C2 canister. Uh, this is the one that contains chromium, but if you know anything about these filters, you'll know that as long as the filter isn't leaking, then of course you're perfectly fine. So um, for it to be leaking the chromium, uh, you, I would hope common sense would show that it would be leaking so bad that you would be like, okay, this filter is damaged and needs to be thrown away. Um, but this one, I opened up myself, I found a guy a couple years ago selling these things at a gun show and I picked up uh, the three that he had and this one is from September of 1990. So, mask is from 85, the uh, um, XL valve cover is from 84 and of course the filter is from uh, 90 and then just a case for it that I got at the surplus store. So, just to keep it from getting damaged. Um, anyways guys, I'm very very proud of this gas mask. Um, my first gas mask was an MCU2 AP size medium. I think it was dated 92 or something like that. Unfortunately I got rid of it. I wish I never did. Um, but that's what got me into collecting gas masks was that I wanted an M17. Back then they were really hard to find actually. Um, and anytime you did find them you are paying 60 70 dollars for them so i went to a pawn shop and around here um right outside of ellsworth air force base there's a lot of pawn shops and you can usually guarantee that uh there'd be at least one mcu 2p in one of the shops if not more so that's where i found my first one and then ever since then i wanted to get another one so uh, i found a few more at a gun show uh, sold off most of them and then these are the ones that I kept this is my rarest one I don't know if this is my rarest gas mask in my entire collection it very well could be but of course it's definitely the most rarest MCU series mask in my collection so I'm really proud of this one and for the um, MSA Millennium's carrier uh, they never had a specific carrier for the MSA Millennium uh, to my knowledge at least other than those bags that they usually come in or the plastic case um, and uh, They're just a plastic bag that say MSA across them um, down at the fire station. We get ours uh, In those bags and they just say MSA on them. They're the same ones just for SCBAs but uh, I decided to get a MC2P gas mask bag and this one is one that I actually dyed black to go with my uh, field gear and I think it turned out really nicely um, it's not uncommon though I mean you will come across these things dyed black on their own uh, typically you can guarantee that they're probably with law enforcement anytime a military thing is dyed black you can usually bet that it was from law enforcement um, I'm sure some knucklehead on eBay would probably find one dyed black and say, oh, it's Special Ops Navy SEAL charging $600 because it's a Navy SEAL, right? Because it's a Navy gas mask, right? Um, no, but you guys, I hope you can pick up on my sarcasm there. Um, I really like this carrier design. I didn't want to settle for uh, an aftermarket um, Black Hawk one or something like that just because you can clip it to your field gear. And for my, I got a black um, Alice suspenders, black belt, and black canteen cover. I didn't dye any of this. This is just Rothko stuff. But of course, it does have the gas mask top. And that's what I'd mostly carry this thing on, was just the gas mask in the water. So, anyways, guys, that is, I guess, my MCU2P um, slash MSA Millennium 
video for my history. Um, like I said, it all started for me with this MCU-2P, not this exact one, but the MCU-2AP uh, gas mask, and that's what sort of made me want to collect even more, uh, even more gas masks. Um, I remember back when I found that one, I had a little bit of field gear, but not much, so could have had an influence too. Either, anyways, guys, I'm really glad that uh, for the last three years you guys have been supporting this channel. Um, I'm glad that you guys enjoy my video, or videos, and I hope you guys enjoy this one. I hope many more, and have a nice day.